for this recording, y'all. It's 622 Thursday, November 10th, 2022. It's a whole month since I um made a recording on this. <laughs> but um Yeah man, you already know what it is. I'll be keeping it real. I'll be I'll be I gotta you know, I got to talk. I got to tell you how I feel. <laughs> That's that Martin Lawrence. Nah, but that ass though. We see what's going on right now. Or do we? Because what we see and how we see what's going on it depends on our perspective. So I can't assume everybody holds the same perspective as me. However, there is objective reality. I mean, I hope there is. Is there? That's a philosophical argument for another time. But let's talk about it. Um, Why can't we have conversations before we throw labels? Right? Why can't we ask questions? Why can't we inquire? Why can't we seek to understand before we just dismiss and label people and things like right obviously I'm talking about Mr. Kanye West and Mr. Kyrie Irving right so Kanye like it happened how long ago I don't remember everything he said and I can see the perspective in which people are offended by that for sure but like what is he talking about though like what is he talking about is what he's saying true that's the question like why aren't they engaging what he's talking about oh because he's crazy right oh he's bipolar oh it's so it's easy to dismiss what he's talking about because he's bipolar he's crazy he's doing this for attention he's a narcissist he's this he's that he's anti-semitic he's a Nazi, blah, 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 labels and this and that and misunderstanding before even inquiring, before even, you know, checking the validity of what he's talking about. So what did he say? What did he talk about? Uh, you know, and they highlight the worst things too. Of course, the media. What did he say? Oh, because he came out against, you know, Jewish people. And it's like, I mean, obviously, I have my own perspective. I don't think what he said was that bad, uh, but I see how what he said can be offensive, right? But what he's talking about, like, maybe I took more time to try to understand what he's talking about, but I think, you know, you can't get inside Kanye's head. I think what he's frustrated with is how you know, his people, black people, get treated in the entertainment world in terms of unfair contracts and unfair treatment and portrayal. And obviously, these systems are comprised of individuals, people. So there are people doing these things. These people group up. These people, you know, have their um inter groups or whatever how big are these groups how powerful are these groups how much reach do these groups have and influence do these groups have that's to be determined maybe that's a matter of perspective see from our perspective not our because we're not all the same some people see things and some people don't but from the common non-entertainment person's perspective can't really tell and see the influence that some of these groups have over the media and influence and culture and public opinion and you know just financial operation all these things but people like Kanye West can because he's up there he's been in those rooms he's talked to those people he's experienced these things and 
say what you want about him um doing things for attention or being eccentric or flamboyant for attention whatever or maybe not whatever because it's almost like the boy who cried wolf like oh you do all these stunts you do all this stuff for attention then when you finally want people to take you serious you know we here now i mean it takes discernment to be able to um separate trolling from real real talk i guess that's the best way i can say it but yeah so he's talking about unfair contracts and unfair business practices and um he was talking about specifically how the jewish community look out for their own they stick together they represent each other they you know invest reinvest into their communities and he says something i'm paraphrasing something like oh i'm jealous of how the jewish community take care of themselves and don't destroy themselves i'm frustrated you know he said he's frustrated with the way black people tear each other down and don't stick together and the type of things that are promoted that continue to perpetually hold us down and tear us down is what gets promoted so we get to see that as what success is and idolize it and try to recreate it he's frustrated with that that's what he's talking about but he's passionate about it so when he's saying all oh, the jewish media blah blah and jewish people this and jewish people that it's coming from a place of hurt but it's not a it, i think it's frustration but i don't think it's hate towards jewish people i mean he said that didn't he he said he doesn't hate anybody if you actually listen to what he's saying he so this is where it comes to the part where when you're not trying to understand somebody you're not going to but if you're trying to understand somebody if you was trying to understand kanye like me like i'm trying to understand what he's saying like why is he saying this what does he mean when he says stuff like this i actually want to know what he means I don't want to just call him crazy. I don't want to just say he's bipolar or whatever the fuck. What does he mean when he says that, you know, we're all one. We should just forget about race and forget about history. That sounds crazy, doesn't it? But if you just take this thought experiment for one second. No, we can't forget about history. No, we can't forget about slavery. We need a reference point. We need we need history for reference. However, what I think he means is like to let go release release the trauma release the trauma of genocide and hate and slavery and all these things almost you know you have to release those things in order to heal yourself from the hate you have to or else it's going to keep perpetuating itself you're going to keep being reminded like as a or maybe you can tell maybe maybe not maybe you see my picture i don't know but as a black person I understand what that means as a black person who's descended from slaves as a as a blackity black hood nigga who's been profiled plays ball smoke weed rap all that as a black person who's probably been uh, discriminated against for one thing or another probably never to my face maybe but this is this is what I'm saying like those and everybody's experience is different but those individual instances of racism are anecdotal and it does not discount systemic racism i'm not saying that but what i'm saying is how long are we going to hide behind our victimhood how long are we going to blame slavery for what we can't do right now we're here in 2022 there are successful black people a lot of them how did they do it there are a lot of conservative black people who are not using racism and slavery as an excuse as to why they can't be successful as to why they can't get ahead personally i'm not discounting those things as factors as to why we are where we are but that can't be the excuse all the time but how do you how do you eliminate that thing as an excuse it comes to a point where you have to release that trauma Oh, you're telling us to let go of slavery and oh, hell no, hell no. I get it, y'all. I totally get it. It's like somebody did you dirty, but you, you cannot heal if you hold on to it. Feel how you feel about that. 
but it's the truth cannot heal and move forward if we holding on to this thing so i get what he says when he says that we got to forget about these racial divisions the racial divisions are bs anyway we are all one people it is the truth two arms two legs and a head we are god body we are god we are little pieces of god we feel, we experience the same emotions we have just been born at different times in different places with different ancestral lineage you know ancestors that evolved and, and developed and cultures that evolved and developed in different parts of the earth at different times those are the only differences between us aside from that we're all the fucking same we are we are all one person one one people so that is the one fundamental truth that religion is trying to show us but we all have different perspectives and we like i said at the top of this we all have different perspectives so the way we perceive these differences is going to manifest itself differently and then there are some bad actors who are going to take those differences and use them as divisions right so now let's come to the Kyrie thing right because like I said did all life start in Africa is that consensus have we all you know finally conceded to that that all life began in Africa now I haven't brushed up on all of this um ancient African uh, anthropology and all this stuff like that however damn I'm thinking right now damn it's, it's a tough one and I don't have I don't have the pause button right here but let's say this because I'm not gonna say I believe I don't believe a lot of anything I just think anything could be possible but I'm not setting up the point right alright so let's go to Kyrie right so Kyrie is suspended from the NBA right now Kyrie's getting a whole lot of backlash in the media and in, 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 in I guess, the common culture or whatever for anti-Semitism, for being an anti-Semite, right? What did he do? What kind of anti-Semitic thing did he do? Did he tweet something? Did he tweet out some crazy statement? You know, was he seen with, you know, a known anti-Semite? Was he... What did he do? Well... The first thing, you know, let's see, let's say what the, the perception was, right? The common perception. He tweeted out a movie called From Hebrews to Negroes. And it's basically, you know, a documentary about Hebrew Israelites and their history and um, demonstrating that they are the original Jews. Right? So. Assistance needed in the laundry detergent department. Kyrie Irvin, as a black man, wanted to know what his history was. He looked up his history as a native, as a black, as an African, and um, he came across that movie. It resonated with him, and he wanted to share it with his with his fellow people. And that's what he did. He shared it. He tweeted the link to the movie that's on Amazon. It's not. It wasn't on some fucking weird dark web back page bullshit. It was right there on Amazon on Front Street still to this day making money right that's it but now like I, and it's it's transparently clear they are intentionally mischaracterizing that assistance needed in the laundry detergent department this is what i'm saying where like y'all see what's going on maybe maybe it's a difference in perspective but i can't i cannot wrap my mind around how you can't see the intentional mischaracterization intentional like the man didn't the man at the press conference the first press conference the man said out of his mouth exactly what i just said he looked up his history he came across the movie and he shared it with his people he said he doesn't hate anybody he has love for all walks of life all cultures we are all one people anyway i mean that's what he said out of his mouth that's what he said he said that that's that was his statement the movie wasn't his statement the stuff in the movie that he didn't make wasn't his statement he said his statement out of his mouth so but people don't want to hear that they want to mischaracterize everything except the most important point that he said out of his mouth i have love for all walks of life we are all one people right 
Okay. Laundry detergent so, department. They wanted to apologize now. They said it offended people. It's anti-Semitic. They wanted to apologize. Apologize for what? What did he do wrong? He didn't make the movie. He didn't make no statement. So what's he apologizing for? Right? So, Hello, right? yeah. Right, um, when you're done, can you so, um, I'm at work. Can you tell? Anyway, I'm on break, though. Well, I said, um, yeah, yo, so they want to bend him over and make him say the exact words they want him to say. He said his piece already. He's after, you know, after the first interview, they came back again. They came back around. Are you apologizing? Yeah, I think people want to hear the words. I'm sorry. He said, no. Nah. He didn't even say no. He said, again, I take responsibility for the harm. Some of these uh, ideas in the movie cause. I don't believe everything in the movie. I take responsibility for posting it. Still not good enough. They suspend him. He wrote a he wrote a, a whole long statement with the word sorry in it too. The word sorry was in the statement. The whole long tweet, still not good enough. Now you gotta go meet with Jewish rabbis and pledge five hundred thousand dollars an additional five hundred thousand dollars because he was already fined. Half a milli for posting a link. Half a milli for posting a link to a movie he didn't even make. Okay. All right. You know, so now you got to go through anti-sensitivity training and all of this. And for what? Come on, dog. They've been in. Oh, and if he, and you know, at first they said five games. He was suspended for five games. And then they amended it to say, no, his, his, his return is dependent on completing these six, these, these six steps. Right? Whatever those things are. Meet with the ADL. Meet with Jewish rabbis. Anti-sensitive training. All this dumb shit. Right? Even after he apologized twice, right? Okay. But the thing, like I said, the thing that's really like disappointing to me is like your heroes, dog. You got, you got Shaq, LeBron, LeBron. I mean, he didn't throw him under the bus hard. He didn't say anything negative. He kind of talked about the act in third person, but even he still mischaracterized it. He's like, you know, there's no place for hate in our league. I stand against hate and blah. What? What hate? What hate? Who who hated? Where the hate at? Prove it. Where the anti-Semitism at? Prove it. Where? How? Who said what? Connect those words to reality. The hate. What hate? Connect it to reality. How can you prove that he hated? How can you prove that he's anti-Semitic? What did he say? What did he do? Prove it. Connect it to reality before we start throwing these labels around and start mischaracterizing people inquire what did he mean why did he share the link what's in it what's in the movie did we watch the movie how do we know it's hateful how do we know it's anti-semitic okay so we you know let's just say they watched the movie is the is the stuff in there true can we connect those things to reality these are the questions that we have to ask before we start throwing these fucking labels around and burying people and and canceling people and and tearing a community apart because it's really tearing the community apart. It's tearing black people apart. No, nobody else cares about this shit. But black people. Oh, look at this nigga over here. Uh, you know, this nigga's crazy. Yeah, he shouldn't say a nigga. Like, and now I'm starting, you know, at first, you know, you know, the usual suspects, Stephen A, Charles Barkley, and all these ESPN clowns and all these fucking idiots. They, they're going to say what they say. Right. But then when the but when when the list of requirements drop now, they want to turn around and, you know, talk out the other side of their mouth now. Oh, this is too much. They're buck breaking him. Oh, they're they're just trying to make an example out of him. Yo, yesterday, wasn't you just saying that this is inexcusable and we don't stand for hate? What are you talking about? See what I'm saying? We just two a day ago, the day before that we condemn hate. We don't stand for hate and blah, blah and all this dumb shit. What are you talking about? Who hated what? <laughs> like, the man said, the man stated his intentions out of his mouth. Out of his mouth, twice. And in a written statement. Nah, intentionally mischaracterizing, right? But now but now that you see that the people don't like that shit, now people turning around, oh, this is too much. Uh, They're trying to break him down and make an example out of him. They're butt breaking him. Clowns all clowns every single person who turned around us and come on y'all clowns 
Stephen A. Smith, he's the main fucking clown. He's always the one. He was on that, and and this is and this is where it comes from too, from last year when Kyrie wasn't on the vaccine shit. Personal choice, personal choice. He know he he knew what was up, but that was his choice. Can he make a choice or not? Oh, he's harmful to the team, and he doesn't care about public health and safety and blah blah. Turned out that that fucking bullshit they was talking about for the vaccine wasn't true, huh? Doesn't save you from getting your grandma sick. Doesn't. Does not save you from getting your grandma sick. Doesn't save nobody from getting nobody sick. So what's the point of getting it to protect somebody else? Bullshit, right? So it turns out Kyrie was right. No apology. Or he just wants to be different. He just wants to be defiant. Oh, but the goalpost move. I thought. I thought it was because he don't care about health. Now he don't. Care, now now he wants to be defiant. So they keep moving the goalposts and keep trying to pin something on him. Let's just be real. They're biased against him. They don't like him because he will not lay down. They want him to lay down and bend over and be a fucking clown. And he won't. And they don't like that. Because they bend over and they lay down. And they talk out both sides of their mouth like fucking clowns. That's why they don't like him. It's, I hope it's pretty clear for everybody to see. Because look, the line in the sand is drawn now. Because now that they're talking about this movie from Hebrews to Negroes, I haven't even watched the movie yet. I want to. I know a little bit about the Hebrew Israelites and stuff like that. I went to a Hebrew Israelite church a couple of years ago, learned a little bit of stuff. I'm not, like I said, I'm not a religious guy. I'm not into the Bible and and, and um, I don't believe a lot of anything. I'm not an atheist. I do believe in God. We are God. I believe in the God that I can see, touch and feel right here, right now. I believe in the God that's in my heart and in my mind. I believe in the God that I see in the mirror. I believe in the God that that I came from. I believe in the God that I reproduce. I believe in the God that's listening to me right now. I believe in the God that's speaking through me right now. I'm not aligned with no group or religion or anything that seeks to divide me from my people. And when I say my people, I don't mean black people. I mean all people. I believe, I, I believe that. That's what I believe. So... Fuck the nonsense. Fuck these clowns who just seek to tear people down and mis and intentionally. Let me say intentionally miscalculate because it ain't no accident. Everybody can see and and hear. It ain't no accident. But Kyrie with with Kanye maybe because Kanye's passionate and Kanye said a whole bunch of shit and he's going on a bunch of rant and uh, rants and interviews here and there. Sometimes it's hard to understand Kanye. I get that. But with this Kyrie shit, it's clearly transparent what they're trying to do to him and why. So, I don't know. I'm not the wake up, wake up type of nigga. I'm not that kind of guy. I'm going to just talk the truth and hope it just travels. The truth how I see it. Because it's all perspective. What I'm saying might not be correct. I'm open-minded. But we need everybody to be open-minded too. We need everybody to ask questions. We need everybody to go inquire for themselves and not just throw these labels around because it's fucking cool. Because it's not cool. 